Today we have more PlayStation and Xbox topics to discuss, as PS4 is reportedly getting a new firmware update and the Xbox controller problem and Microsoft's Bethesda acquisition. We also have to discuss about the new features set to be implemented in Marvel's Avengers and some Ghost of Tsushima, Hogwarts Legacy, and an interesting Elden Ring news. So before jumping into the topics if you are new subscribe to the channel and click the notification icon for knowing interesting and informative topics in an instant happening in the daily gaming world. Starting of with the PS4 news, as there is an update potentially coming to PlayStation 4 this year, and with a host of changes it looks like one major feature could be removed. A firmware update coming to PlayStation 4 might possibly be removing the community's feature. Sony sent out an email revealing the contents of the next PlayStation 4 patch, and it includes multiple changes. Even though the PlayStation 5 has been out for a few months, PS4 is still getting updates. With next-generation consoles selling out fast, most players will be on the previous console. An update is potentially coming to the older device, which would provide some quality-of-life changes. However, certain elements suggest that Sony could be winding down the PS4 in the long run. Currently a beta for now, update 8.50 sounds like it could be coming sometime during spring 2021. The main change coming to the console has to do with notifications. For those who are part of multiple groups, disabling message notifications will be possible. If part of the beta, just head into the specific group and open the options to turn off the feature. Another update coming is the ability to truly hide games. Other players will not be able to see games that the user has previously hidden. Listed at the bottom of the patch notes is a quick mention that communities will no longer be available. This feature was a way for players to create meeting zones for a specific game. This way, gamers from all over could join and meet like-minded individuals. However, when the new update comes out the option to create and use communities will not be possible. On the upside, when viewing a game session screen, players can use a new request to join button to form groups without facing bugs. Most fans playing on the previous generation will be happy that PlayStation 4 is getting updates. While there is nothing particularly major coming to 8.50, it does look to make some aspects more tolerable. Those who enjoy playing with others intermittently will have more options to make solo playtime more private. And being able to join a group using the new request button should make multiplayer more efficient overall. That said, there will no doubt be some who are disappointed to learn about communities. With PlayStation 5 having the biggest launch, it seems like Sony could be trying to reduce the social aspect of the older console. Now these players will have to utilize outside methods to gather up for specific game topics. It is possible that the feature is not that popular though, and that could explain why Sony is removing it. Nevertheless, most will know that it is only a matter of time goes before features are phased out on PlayStation 4. Up next, Ghost of Tsushima directors become permanent tourism ambassadors for Tsushima Island, as Tsushima Mayor Hiroki Hitakatsu announces a special honor for Ghost of Tsushima game director Nate Fox and creative director Jason Connell. Following a lengthy development cycle, Sucker Punch scored another major hit when it released the open-world action game, Ghost of Tsushima in July of 2020. Scoring well with critics and fans alike, the title won multiple end-of-year awards and went on to become a best-seller on the PlayStation 4. In addition, Sucker Punch continued to improve the experience after launch, releasing a massive content pack centered around a new co-op experience completely for free. While the game went on to become the fastest-selling first-party original IP, Ghost of Tsushima has also had a significant real-world impact as well. In fact, the Tsushima Island Tourism Board partnered with Sucker Punch, creating a website promoting both the game and the real-world inspirations and landmarks featured. A few months later after a devastating typhoon hit Tsushima Island, a Tori gate at the Watatsumi Shrine was heavily damaged. Thanks to the popularity of the game, a crowdfunding campaign to repair the structure exceeded the asking amount of 5 million yen or around $47,000 by 500%. The shrine was able to pull in over a quarter million dollars from generous fans and others. As it stands, the island of Tsushima isn't yet done with Sucker Punch. Tsushima Mayor Hiroki Hitakatsu announced earlier this week that Ghost of Tsushima game director Nate Fox 
and creative director Jason Connell are being named permanent tourism ambassadors. While the ceremony would be held in person under normal circumstances, it will instead be held digitally due to travel restrictions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Once restrictions are listed, Mayor Hitakatsu plans to invite the entire Sucker Punch team to visit the island. Fox and Connell will be receiving an award and letter of appreciation thanks to their work for helping to spread the name and history of Tsushima to the world in a wonderful way. Mayor Hitakatsu also confirmed that while the title has been given to notable Japanese individuals in the past, this is the first time this recognition has been given to someone who has promoted the island through their work. This most recent accolade is another jewel in the game's already packed crown. While fans aren't sure what Sucker Punch is planning next, many are hoping that Ghost of Tsushima is getting a PS5 upgrade soon. With Sony bringing more of its first-party games to the PC and places like Steam, some fans are curious if this title will also be a candidate for release there as well. But personally, I don't like games like God of War and Uncharted going to PC, because Sony should stick up to some of its franchises, to pillar its exclusivity mansion. Controversial Hogwarts Legacy lead designer Troy Levitt leaves Avalanche Software saying that he will explain his departure in an upcoming YouTube video. Although specific details about Hogwarts Legacy are still being kept under wraps by developer Avalanche Software, it is without a doubt that the upcoming game's core concept is something that Harry Potter fans have long been asking for. In its initial trailer, Avalanche revealed that Hogwarts Legacy is an open-world RPG game set in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. However, Hogwarts Legacy soon found itself in the middle of never-ending controversies. It started with players campaigning to boycott the game due to its indirect association with Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, who continues to draw criticism for making transphobic remarks, followed by the controversial YouTube channel of one of Hogwarts Legacy's developers, lead designer Troy Levitt. Although J.K. Rowling will forever be associated with the Harry Potter franchise no matter how controversial she chooses to be, the same couldn't be said of Levitt, who has now confirmed his departure from Hogwarts Legacy and Avalanche Software. In a series of tweets, Levitt confirmed that he decided to leave Avalanche Software, clarifying that he has nothing but good things to say about Hogwarts Legacy, Avalanche, and WB Games. However, it is worth noting that his tweet did not specifically mention the exact reason that prompted him to leave. Levitt added that he is in the process of creating a YouTube video about the whole incident soon, which will likely address his thoughts on the whole scandal and what pushed him to leave the development team of Hogwarts Legacy. For the uninitiated, Levitt made headlines last February after Twitter user Liam Robertson, known for his collaborations with Did You Know Gaming, accused Levitt of creating anti-fem and pro-GG vids. In this context, GG is in reference to the Gamergate controversy, which saw its peak in 2014 and included a harassment campaign targeted primarily at Zoe Quinn, Brianna Wu, and Anita Sarkeesian. Browsing through Levitt's YouTube channel, it is clear that many of his videos are about Gamergate and feminism in the video game industry. Other videos include lengthy defenses for John Lasseter, the co-founder of Pixar, who resigned from his position in 2017 after allegations of sexual misconduct. It remains to be seen how extensive Levitt's forthcoming YouTube video will be and whether his departure was truly his own decision or if Avalanche and WB Games had anything to do with it. It is worth remembering that his recent tweet mentioned that he is in good spirits with WB and Avalanche, so this remains unlikely. At the moment, Avalanche Software and WB Games haven't directly addressed the issue. However, back in 2018, Levitt confirmed that WB Games is aware of his YouTube channel, but it didn't appear to be an issue for them. He also clarified in the same video that this did not mean the company is endorsing his beliefs. Levitt described that the video game publisher is only concerned about making good games rather than pushing a social justice agenda. Moving forward we have another Elden Ring leak points to Dark Souls style online PvP. A few more rumors about From Software's open-world fantasy action RPG Elden Ring have come from a leaker who has had plenty to say about the game in the past. In the wake of a leaked Elden Ring trailer, the authenticity of which is still being debated, fans are curious to know if features from other From Software games will be present in Elden Ring. If the latest leaked information is true, 
The game will include online PvP elements similar to those of the Dark Souls slash Bloodborne games, and have a class system. At times it seems like Elden Ring has suffered from a lack of transparency with fans more than any other game in development right now. From Software has remained guarded about revealing any big information on the game, and fans have turned to other avenues for news. With recent revelations that Elden Ring may be delayed internally due to COVID-19, and its release window could be outside of 2021, this long stretch with little to no official information could continue. With that said, new potential details about Elden Ring are coming via another leak shared in the online forum, Reset Era. Though Elden Ring fans have been tricked by fake leaks while waiting for new information, this leak comes omnipotent, someone whose unofficial information has been viewed as credible in the past. In response to a fan statement about PvP confirmation, Omnipotent responded with PvP slash online stuff is in. Omnipotent also mentions that Elden Ring will have a class system that will offer the player class choices to start with, but the player can then choose different paths as they progress through the game to fit playstyle preferences. Omnipotent also commented on the footage from the leaked Elden Ring trailer, mentioning the video leak's poor quality was unable to faithfully portray the game's visuals. Omnipotent goes further to say that the leaked trailer was never intended to be revealed to the public, as a portion of the trailer carried a for internal use only message. These thoughts echo many fan reactions to the trailer. Although some fans were excited to see the dragons, structures, and a few potential bosses, Others are tired of leak speculations and just want from software to get to the point where it can release official news. For fans who have kept up with the roller coaster that is Elden Ring's development, it's good to hear this news from Omnipotent. The leaker has talked at length in the past about Elden Ring's scope, world size and connectivity, and from software's intention to make the game feel more alive and immersive. But barring official confirmation from From Software, this is all speculation that will hopefully be confirmed or denied sooner rather than later. Come on from software, make some moves. Crystal Dynamics releases a new trailer for Marvel's Avengers that details some of the game's next-generation features on PS5 and Xbox Series X. There once was a point when Marvel's Avengers was going to launch alongside the next-generation PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X consoles. Unfortunately for those hoping to play the next-gen version of the game, it wound up getting delayed to 2021. Luckily for fans, the wait for Marvel's Avengers on next-gen consoles is nearly over, launching March 18th with the option for existing owners to upgrade for free. Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix have released a new Marvel's Avengers trailer that explains the game's next-gen features. This includes faster load times, which will allow players to load into missions faster and should generally improve the overall experience. Players will also notice improved textures in the next-gen version of Marvel's Avengers, with the game said to maintain 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. Improved visuals will be noticeable elsewhere in the next-gen version of Marvel's Avengers as well, particularly when it comes to the various heroes' special moves and the environmental destruction. These improvements may be most noticeable when Marvel's Avengers players are playing the game as the Hulk, as his attacks tend to smash everything around him. Those playing Marvel's Avengers on next-gen consoles should be aware that they can still play the game with their friends who have yet to upgrade. Like many other recent multiplayer games, Marvel's Avengers supports cross-gen multiplayer, allowing fans to play together within the same console family. This means that those on Xbox Series X can play with those on Xbox One, and those on PS5 can play with those on PS4. The Marvel's Avengers next-gen update arrives on March 18th, and it's not coming alone. The Hawkeye DLC will also be available on March 18th, giving fans of the multiplayer superhero game more reason to jump back in. However, the next-gen debut will also come alongside a new patch that has so far been quite controversial in the community. The development team has had a ton of work to do in squashing bugs and improving the overall campaign and online experiences from a technical standpoint. As the title begins to become more stable, 
It seems like it's now time to turn to more system tweaks that will adjust future character progression and change the way players earn additional cosmetics going forward. The max character level in Marvel's Avengers is 50 and right now it doesn't take players very long to get there, especially if they already have another max level character. This is due to the way XP doesn't really scale in Marvel's Avengers. The devs want to change that going forward and really slow down the grind from levels 25 to 50. The upcoming changes won't impact characters that are already level 50, but every other existing hero is going to be impacted when the next update rolls out on March 18th. In a recent blog post, the devs addressed the current XP system and how the coming changes will work for players when the March 18th patch arrives. In addition to the XP changes, the dev team is also taking a close look at the cosmetic system and trying to remove some of the randomization from the way it currently works. The goal here is to allow players a little more control over which cosmetics they are working towards while they grind in-game content. Hopefully this will offer some additional motivation to continue playing the game, even during the long breaks between new content releases. The Clint Hawkeye content is right around the corner, along with these other changes, so it will be very interesting to see if this is all enough to bring some players back to the game and help drive some new additions to the player base. We also have a leak on the game as a new leak suggests that Marvel's Avengers will be getting customizable HARM rooms which is holographic augmented reality machine at some point in the future, allowing people to change and modify what enemies appear. This all started when Intel accidentally released a video, showcasing the feature, before quickly taking it down. However, Assemble Podcast on YouTube managed to record a video and upload it before this happened. We see clips with hundreds of enemies on screen and the ability to change the group size, challenge of those enemies, and the groups of foes that show up. Environmental hazards can even be added, alongside buffs for your heroes. This was all shown off on PC, so we have to wonder how this will run on PS5, and most importantly, PS4, where the technology is nowhere near as powerful. The trailer is also plastered with Powered by Intel, which might suggest that this is even a PC exclusive feature. But, if it does show up on consoles, enemy numbers might be a bit more limited than what we see on PC, but that's not a great deal. More details about the Hawkeye content should continue to arrive in the coming weeks as the March 18th release date approaches for his operation and the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of the game. Until then, be sure to check back frequently for more Marvel's Avengers news, guides, and updates. And finally we have four new Xbox topics to discuss about. Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax Media, which is the parent company of studios including Bethesda, Machine Games, ID Software, and more, has been major news since its announcement in September 2020. It has been such big news that many may not have realized that the acquisition wasn't complete. All manner of legal hurdles had to be overcome across many different countries. There's good news on that front, however, as the ZeniMax media acquisition appears to have made an important step. Friday morning an issuance from the United States Securities and Exchange Commission was published online declaring Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax media as accepted. The SEC is an independent agency and a part of the United States federal government that oversees public companies and the market at large, as well as enforcing laws tied to market manipulation as a general idea. The SEC was responsible for reviewing Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax Media to ensure that it was entirely legal in the United States. What was published online is called a Notice of Effectiveness, which basically declares that the SEC's review of the documents Microsoft issued for its acquisition complete. That accepted declaration means that all of Microsoft's filings for the acquisition are in order. There's no need to correct them, and there's nothing within them that the SEC sees as unacceptable. In other words, in the United States' eyes, Microsoft has completed its acquisition of ZeniMax Media. That doesn't necessarily mean that the acquisition is complete, of course. Both Microsoft and ZeniMax Media are based in the United States, so this is obviously a major step forward. However, other regions and countries still have their own respective approval processes. For example, the European Commission said in early February it would rule on the acquisition by March 5th. It may have already done so, but nothing has been confirmed publicly. 
There were never any significant concerns that Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax Media wouldn't go through, though with such a large acquisition anything is possible. The larger concern was whether it could be delayed, which is still possible. As an odd example, one ongoing lawsuit tied to Fallout 4 DLC sought to delay the acquisition, but that never came to fruition. Microsoft, on the other hand, seemingly had all confidence that the acquisition would go through as scheduled. There are reliable leaks from a variety of outlets that Microsoft is planning an event later this month that will discuss what the acquisition of Bethesda and other game studios means for Xbox. It took almost half a year, but soon gamers will get to learn exactly what a post-acquisition Microsoft looks like. Talking about Xbox, after six years, a new and improved version of the Microsoft Edge web browser app on Xbox consoles is available for early testers to try out and after being temporarily shut down last year, the Xbox Design Lab will return from its hiatus in 2021 and likely this time feature the Xbox Series X and S. Six years later, the Xbox app has essentially remained the same, but a big change is on the horizon. According to Xbox Insiders and the program's Alpha Skip Ahead Ring, a brand new app is available to download for testing, based on the Chromium version of the browser that debuted for Windows 10 PCs last year. The general consensus among insiders so far is that the new version is a definite improvement over the current app performance-wise. Some have even gone so far as to proclaim it better than other popular web browsers like Google Chrome. After being put on hiatus last year, Xbox has revealed that the design lab will soon come back, allowing players to create their own unique controllers once again. In September of 2020, the Xbox Design Lab shut down temporarily. The plan was always for the Design Lab to come back online in time, and many believed that the temporary close had to do with swapping the controller design availability over to the Xbox Series X, S controller. Fans know now that the Lab will be back sometime this year. The idea behind the Xbox Design Lab is that players are able to create their own unique style for their Xbox controller. Before the service was shut down, players were able to mix and match the colors of the body, back, bumpers and triggers, D-pad, thumbstick, ABXY buttons, and more. After being put on hold, the Xbox Design Lab will be back again in 2021. A fan reached out to Xbox asking about the lab on Twitter and Xbox responded right back with the good news. On top of that, the Twitter user also mentioned wanting to make an Xbox Series X controller, and Xbox did not sway that thought, which makes it seem even more likely that it will return specifically with the Xbox Series X and S controller in mind. Another thought is that when the Xbox Design Lab returns it could allow players to finally design their own Xbox Elite controller. While creating a special design for the standard controller is nice, Many would enjoy the opportunity to have fun with creative colors for the flexible and powerful Xbox Elite controller as well. The old Xbox Design Lab did not allow that. It is almost a definite that the lab will return with the ability to create Xbox Series X and S controllers, but perhaps there is a small chance of the Elite controller as well. Speaking of the Xbox controller, Xbox is reportedly actively investigating the Xbox Series X's unresponsive controller problem, which has plagued some users since launch. The Xbox Series X launch has been relatively smooth, with the biggest issue being availability above all else. However, as with any new product launch, there have been some technical issues that early adopters have had to deal with. While not all of the Xbox Series X launch issues have been deal-breakers, one, in particular, has caused fans serious problems, though Xbox is looking for a solution. Those with an Xbox Series X may have noticed that controllers will desync and become unresponsive from time to time, a major inconvenience that requires a multi-step process to fix. While those problems can soil a gaming session, fans should take some comfort in knowing that Xbox is now actively looking for a fix for the issue, meaning a solution should be inbound soon. A Microsoft spokesperson recently issued a statement to the loadout acknowledging that it has caught wind of the problem. The spokesperson stated that Microsoft puts all of its products through rigorous quality assurance testing to help thwart issues like this, and that the company is actively working on a solution. The Xbox Series X controller hasn't been alone, as the Xbox One similarly experienced controller desync issues. Fans have waited quite some time for the issue to be solved and it is a bit concerning that no solution has been released yet. 
For the Xbox Series X, players typically have to completely reset their consoles to solve the problem and occasionally reconnect the controller to the system with a USB-C cable. It's inconvenient, but until Microsoft has a fix released, fans are going to have to bear with it. Xbox isn't alone in its current controller situation. The Nintendo Switch has suffered issues with Joy-Con drift, which can cause player characters to move without the user making any input on their controller due to wear and tear. The issue has spawned widespread complaints within the user base, and even some lawsuits. The PS5's DualSense controller may have similar issues later down the line, with studies revealing that the controller may only have a lifespan of about 417 hours, which isn't that much all things considered. It's unclear what's causing such major issues in contemporary controllers, though it seems there are give and takes for every platform at this point. On the bright side, those problems are being dealt with, but it's still not a fun circumstance to begin with. Hope soon the companies take some step forward and clear all these controller issues. Therefore until then from SMPV, it's goodbye.